working on, oh, I'll just put that down there, working on the appropriate. everyone welcome back to installation 00 and this is kind of a general update on things that have been going on with project Mjolnir and kind of a big announcement of the the thing over my my shoulder there but we'll get to that in a minute so this is a general kind of update on progress of various different aspects of project Mjolnir as a whole so to kick things off we're doing kind of a rework of the BDU um, and re-implementing some of the sensor arrays and some of the uh, the internal systems that were kind of stitched into the inner surface of the BDU pretty much neared completion on that I'm going to give a kind of a full showcase of that in due course we're also reworking um, the shoulder nacelles for the the cooling of the liquid medium that's then circulated through the the internal cooling vest we've rewired the uh, heating matrix inside of that under under layer as well the carbon fiber heating matrix uh, just to optimize basically where the cables go for my comfort but is also for for the sakes of, of where those cables are accessible to be able to connect them into a power supply uh, so we're working on a few different things in regards to the heating and cooling system. We're redeveloping kind of a back unit that's that's going to nest onto the actual back of the BDU in a much more optimised way, harnessing actually the, those um, those triangular hard points that we have mounted on the BDU. These are the the negatives effectively that click into into the um, the the ones that are on the BDU and hold everything in place with very strong neodymium magnets. So we're kind of reworking that again. Full showcase of that coming. We're now also moving over into kind of properly to phase two for Project Mjolnir now. So we're starting to explore the, the actual power assist and robotics aspect of Project Mjolnir. Now, of course, that starts really, our, our journey with that starts with being able to actually track the human body. Now, earlier on in the process, we were looking at doing uh, surface skin uh, muscle sensors to be able to pick up the, the, the impulse from the muscles. Uh, as well as flex sensors at joints to be able to double check that the, those readings. We're still entertaining those ideas, but we're also developing um, what we're, we're currently calling the proprioception frame. Now, proprioception is basically our, our body's ability to know where our limbs are in space, even if we can't sort of see, you know, <laughs> what our limbs are doing. Our brain knows roughly where our, our limbs are because, well, at least as far as we're aware, there are there are other fibres inside of our muscles that are there to sense position of the muscle as opposed to just generate muscle force so the proprioception frame is something that we're working on uh, which uses uh, potentiometers and these really low profile joints these are structurally limited obviously these are so for example if this was a knee joint it won't go any further forward you don't want to bend your knee the wrong way but it will go almost to the one the full 120 degree bend that you need for the knee and obviously the little uh, potentiometer there as well is effectively just a variable resistor we can read the electricity that's coming off of that and how the resistance varies to get an absolute position of the joint at any given time so this is this is passive this won't be powered at all this is going to be connected to basically me to, to, to probably to the bdu to the hard points that are on the outside of the bdu layer along with some sort of fl aluminium flat bar or ideally probably carbon fiber flat bar a little bit lighter uh, but just as strong and what this will basically mean then is that as i move around the various joints and um, we've got compound um, proprioception joints for like very difficult joints like the shoulder for example that has quite a large range of motion we're going to have these mounted onto the bdu so as i move around so the, the 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 potentiometers are changed in their particular angle the resistance changes and from that we can track the exact position of all those respective joints in space in real time we're still again entertaining the idea of using flex sensors to kind of double check that and we're still not ruling out moving over to to muscle sensors specifically uh, particularly for like complex joints so for example with the hands we want to have some degree of, of power assist to a degree we'll probably use electroactive polymers for that so because they have much smaller joints and and much more delicate and and more dexterous there's there's a greater range of motion available there so with that we'll probably be using muscle sensors in the forearms because obviously all the forearm muscles control independent finger movement it just be easier to pick that information up from the forearms so that will allow us to kind of sense in real time where various parts of my body are in space at any given time and we can output that to a simple computational system that then will output 
output a mirroring signal to the quote-unquote power assist frame, which will be much more heavy duty. That will have linear actuators, servo motors, electroactive polymers, and, and the like, depending on the respective joint, as I've covered many times before. Obviously, you need stronger articulators for the joints like the legs because legs on average are approximately twice the strength of arms because obviously they're carrying all of the weight of the body above them so depending on the respective joint depends on what articulator we use and then effectively that computational system that robotic system tells those motors to mirror the exact position of the proprioception frame now there's going to be a little bit of kind of finessing of the code to really dial in the latency so that there's ideally minimal latency we don't want to to move and have the robotic system move ahead of us because then it may force the joint to move and then you can have a, a lock up which basically which is where the the motorized joint is forcing the proprioception joint round to a point where it just locks up and then it won't release uh, we don't need that ideally but we also don't want it to lag behind us so that we have to kind of fight against it so there's going to be a lot of finessing there and we're bringing on people who are robotics experts to help us in those particular fields so we're still stretching out our limbs a little bit and we're we're, we're finding people from across the uh, across the community and far beyond to help us in this endeavor but this is when the really interesting stuff is going to start happening all the powered exoskeleton aspect of things starts happening now so now's an ideal time to hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on that so that's kind of where we're going with with the robotic system and the phase two aspect of things going on at the moment however the other big thing i want to announce obviously is it, it's literally in at the end of this month is the first of may today at the end of this month uh hcs is coming to london for the very first time and i thought since i'm based here in the uk and i just so happen to have tickets to be able to go i thought what better opportunity to showcase both the bdu and the Mjolnir helmet live to the community than at HCS, kind of the de facto event for Halo currently in existence. So, BD, this is why I'm putting all this work into the BDU and everything at the moment. I'm trying to get everything kind of keyed up. So, I will be attending the London HCS major event uh, in uh, Twickenham Arena with the BDU and with this sodding huge flight case behind me, which is the housing for the real Mjolnir helmet. I will be turning up to the event with that on at least one of the days. I might do more depending on demand and, and, and how busy the days get, but I also want to have time just to kind of liaise with the community as, as I like to do. So to kind of give you a breakdown of the helmet flight case, it's obviously stylized for Oni. It's actually a Pella case. It's very tough and resistant to knocks and bumps and things like that. It's entirely waterproof and I've heavily modified the Pella case uh, to to hold the helmet but also to make something of a showcase of it in and of itself and i've done that by adding in a lot of technology so first and foremost there's foam inserts inside that i've kind of removed all the sections that need to be removed so that there is room for the mjolnir helmet the uh the hololens 2 so that the, the working heads up display system um blue, couple of bluetooth speakers a power supply unit and some other essentials now the power supply unit is essential to this system because i have a lot of other electronics in there. So for example, in the lid of the flight case, we have the U-Perfect portable dual display, which is a really low profile um, clamshell dual display device that I've, I've mounted in portrait that then opens up into kind of a dual portrait screen where I can then showcase different things, different videos and, and, and different um, almost uh, blueprints and holographics of the helmet and wireframes and things like that. Um, as well as just have essential information up there about the channel and, and about the project and all this sort of stuff. That is all being fed to it from the Melee microcomputer running Windows 11, which is a fantastically small but fantastically powerful microcomputer, which is entirely fanless and instead uses uh, its the, the surface of the device itself to actually kind of vent off heat, which means that I've actually thermally coupled it to the flight case itself so it can dump some of that heat into the case. Uh, as well as the fact that when it's on, obviously the case is open, so just natural airflow will help keep that cool. And that entire thing can be powered from just a USB-C cable, basically just pumping in a, about 12 volts into into the microcomputer. Uh, that goes the same for the dual displays as well. They take 12 volts, so again, that's why we needed the little um, the little power supply unit that converts kind of a large kettle lead 
to the step down supplies that I need for the various technology in there along with the fact that I've kind of sported things out with some RGB lights and the like on top of that we've also got a wireless keyboard which is actually retractable I designed a bracket and some and some um, some mounting systems for the keyboard to be mounted to to be able to be slid down in front of the case but also be deployed and, and positioned an optimal position to be able to be used and be able to, be able to interact with the, um, the computer system without any major problems. In that regard I have to now actually pause brief briefly and give a huge shout out to Apply 3D uh, and Frozen who were kind enough to send me the Frozen Sonic Mega 4K S a wash station, a cure station, and a refill pump, and it's been absolutely invaluable in doing all of this so far, both doing the, the cooling of cells and everything that's going on with that at the moment, working on, oh, I'll just put that down there, working on the proprioception frame, uh, as well as all of the new things that I've put into this, this flight case, and I'm sure it's gonna be invaluable when we start tackling uh, the version two helmet. There's a big full showcase coming for the Frozen and, and its features and how it's helped certain aspects of what I'm doing with Project Mjolnir and reverse engineering a lot of that technology. A lot of people who are a part of the 405th uh, cosplay, um, cosplay division will know I've been posting across social media about 3D printed visors that are fantastically clear. That printer is, has been, has been an absolute godsend in regards to doing that sort of stuff so again there's a huge showcase coming for uh, for the frozen uh, sonic mega 4k s and then to really finish off the flight case i got a large piece of, uh, of acrylic laser cut and etched uh, with uh, as, as powered by zero zero industrial style blueprint uh, which is then side lit by an led strip around the inside of the case which really kind of finishes the presentation of the case off and then of course when you close everything down and, and pack it all away you can lock it down stick some padlocks on there for good measure and of course the thing has been ordained in only stickers unsc stickers materials group stickers and zero zero industrial stickers just to add that little level of authenticity to really ground it in the universe so to speak and that's kind of broadly speaking where we're at at the moment and, and what we're planning on doing uh, in, in the short to medium term. Uh, again, we're still kind of in the stages of fleshing out how the version 2 helmet's going to work um, and then that'll be reverse engineered and, and made available uh, through, uh, through the materials group uh, for cosplay purposes and the like. Loads more to do, but again, the, the real big thing at the moment is HCS London, this is going to be showing up in person with myself and if there's any time to be tuning into Project Mjolnir, it's right now at the beginning of the exo-frame stage where we're really going to start doing some impressive stuff and the stuff we've got going in the background at the moment uh, that's not quite ready to show you is immensely promising and immensely cool and I'm really looking forward to showing you what we've been up to. That's that's it, broadly speaking. Um, thanks again for everyone supporting, everyone donating via the GoFundMe, uh, for jumping on board the Materials Group Patreon, for watching, for liking, subscribing, um, and sharing the videos uh, across social media. All of it helps. All of it's been just so inspiring and so motivating to see. I thank all of you. I thank uh, Apply3D for them sending over the uh, the frozen sonic mega 4k s and i thank uh hey create uh laser cutting and etching for uh for doing the the laser cut blueprint inside of the flight case and there's loads more to come very excited take it easy everyone and find peace in the domain thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video consider smashing the like button and leave a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next Big shout out to my patrons Spartan 10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet Bear, Mikhail, Sophia, and Ashley, my dutiful monitors, Darian, Scarab, Spartan0137, Anthony, Ghost, Aaron, Chris, Jacob, Sean, Element Zero, Somatic, Jordan J3, Dan, Mr. Keys, Directal, Gunslinger, Jacob, Bandmill, Echo, Evermore, Officer Cat, and Personal Devil, my diligent sub monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers and all the other patrons who have jumped aboard to support the channel. It means more to me than I can accurately put into words. Another shout out to my Tier Zero Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob, Schmitty, Talia, Fenrir, and Born Stella. 
and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Shout out to John for, I don't fucking know. And if you want more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And consider jumping aboard yourself as a patron or YouTube member to keep the channel alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.